Hey everybody, this video is called Present and Obey, and tonight we're going to continue our pass-through study here in the book of Deuteronomy, where we're going to look at presenting of the first fruits and the tithes, as well as we're going to look at the call to obey the Lord's commands. So, Deuteronomy chapter 26, starting verse 1 through 4, it says, And it shall be when you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance, and you possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take some of the first of the produce of the ground, which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God has given you, and put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. And you shall go to the one who is priest in those days and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the country which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket out of your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. So as the focus of the laws wrap up in chapter 25, now Moses is going into commanding the people to keep two rituals when they had conquered the land and to begin to enjoy the produce. And the baskets of the first fruits of the first harvest reaped by Israel once they were in the land of Canaan. And they were to be taken to the tabernacle as Exodus 23 verse 19 and Numbers chapter 18 verse 12 through 17 called for. And this is to be distinguished from the annual feast of, of the first fruits back in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 9 through 14. And it's celebrated in conjunction with the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread. And in Numbers 18 was the first fruits that were regularly, regularly brought to the priests. And that was separate and that was special. And the first fruit given honored the Lord as portion was given to God before any was used for one's self. In verse 5 through 10, it says, And you shall answer and say before the Lord your God, My father was a Syrian about to perish, and he went down to Egypt and dwelt there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great and mighty and populous. But the Egyptians mistreated us, afflicted us, and laid hard bondage on us. Then we cry, cried out to the Lord God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He has brought us to this place and has grant, given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land, which you, O Lord, have given me. So the offering of the first fruits was to be accompanied by an elaborate confession of the Lord's faithfulness in preserving Israel and bringing the people into the land. And the essential aspects of the worshippers coming to the sanctuary were the presentation of the first fruits and bowing in worship and rejoicing in the Lord's goodness. And the visit to the sanctuary was a confession, an acknowledgement of God. And it was a time that they were to praise God and rejoice in the Lord's goodness and the Lord's mercy. And it extended to the former generations and is evidence of divine sustaining grace at that time. And perish in the Hebrew word abad means better or as wanderer. And a wandering Syrian referred to Jacob who was each Israel's father or ancestor. In verse 11 says, So you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you in your house, you and the Levite and the stranger who is among you. So when we receive from God and we give back to God, it should make us rejoice. And verse uh, 12 through 15 when you have finished laying aside all the tithe of your increase in the third year, the year of tithe, and have given it to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, so that they may eat within your gates and be filled, then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the holy tithe from my house, and also have given them to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, 
according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed your commandments, nor have I forgotten them. I have not eaten any of it when in mourning, nor have I removed any of it for an unclean use, nor given any of it for the dead. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord my God and have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel in the land which you have given us, just as we, just as you swore to our fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. So the tithe was collected every third year and it would continue in the land of Canaan, the promised land. And this tithe wasn't taken to the central sanctuary, but was distributed locally to the Levites and the immigrants and the widows and the orphans. And for the regular annual tithes, ch chapter 14, verse 22, covered. And the confession to be made in connection with the offering of this first tithe consisted of a statement of obedience and a prayer for God's blessing. And within this manner, the Israelite confessed his continual dependence on God, and he lived in an abundant expectation of God's continued gracious blessing. And in verse 15, it was the first reference to God's dwelling in heaven in this book of Deuteronomy. And from his abode in heaven, God has given the Israelites the land flowing with milk and honey as he promised back in Genesis to the patriarchs. And his continued blessing on both the people and the land was requested. And the prayer described here, it shows that giving with the right heart is what God is concerned about. You know, giving with the right heart to be done according to God's word in obedience, set apart. And to Israel is to have the expectation of blessing. In verse 16, it says, This day the Lord your God commands you to observe these statutes and judgments, and therefore you shall be careful to observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. So from chapter 4 in Deuteronomy through now, Moses has reminded Israel of God's commands. And now Moses is encouraging them to keep God's commands. So Moses spent a good portion of this book telling Israel to do God's commands, and now he's telling them to keep it, you know, put the faith in action. In verse 17, today you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments and his judgments, and that you will obey his voice. So Israel proclaimed that the Lord was their God and that they would walk in his ways. In verse 18, 19, it says, Also today the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people, just as he promised you that you should keep all his commandments and that he will set you high above the nations, which he has made in praise and name and honor, that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. So that wraps up this uh, chapter right here. And Israel proclaimed that the Lord there that the Lord was their God and they'll walk in his ways. And then Israel's obedience to the Lord was more than rewarded. God's promise is that he would exalt the obedient Israel and he would set them high above these other nations if Israel walks in obedience with him. And, you know, he would set them high above, which has made, he has made in praise and a name and an honor. So to wrap up this chapter, we looked at the instruction for bringing of the first fruits and the tithes. In verses 1 through 4, they covered the bringing of the first fruits to the priests. And we see that Moses, he showed praise and thanks at the giving of the first fruits. And Israel was to rejoice as God provided all the supplies of good things. And Moses gave the prayer for the giving of the tithe. And while this chapter is very short to the point, you know, we must reflect on this, that God doesn't just want us to give. God doesn't want us to give just because we have to, but God wants us to give in a rejoiceful heart. God wants us to give in the right heart, as you later find from the Apostle Paul speaks of in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 and 7. 
And Moses, he encouraged Israel with the call to complete full obedience. And, you know, as Christians, we are reminded of God's word and, you know, we're called to faithfulness and we ought to be striving for obedience. And we're not going to be sinless perfectionists here on this earth, but every day as we grow in our walks with Christ, we should be seeking to be more holy each day. Not holier than now, but holy. And sometimes as Christians, we need to be instructed regarding the law of God. And sometimes the being reminded regarding the law of God, but most often we need to be encouraged regarding the law of God and to obey it and to do it. And the chapter, it ends with an amazing proclamation of Israel and identifying with God through their obedience. And we see that God promised that they would be his special people that he would lift up. And, you know, it's the same way with us that we are God's special people and we are his workmanship and we should be striving to please the father. But that's going to wrap up this video. We'll see you next at, as we're going to look at a special altar. And at this point, we are three quarters of the way through our study here in Deuteronomy. And tomorrow night, we'll be in chapter 27. So hope you have a great rest of your night. God bless.